Hello, Quincy High School students and families. Uh, this is Larry Taglary, the principal at Quincy High School. Um, sending you a video, I'm joined today with our assistant principal, Ms. Murray, and our athletic director, um, Mr. Mahoney. Wanted to provide some information for you, certainly for the start of our school year. Our greatest hope that everybody is well in your families. Uh, we're definitely anxious to have everybody back. Um, Certainly this year will be a year like no other, you know, starting out with remote and um, it will definitely certainly be different than the way we finished last year as well. So we have some slides prepared. Uh, the PowerPoint will be posted. It will be sent as an attachment as well. So you, the links that are provided can be used. And um, of course, biggest thing, if you have any questions, um, please just reach out to the school. So let me pull up some slides for us to look at. Okay, we should be on there right now. Um, right, so welcome to Quincy High School and well, that, that's welcome to uh, ninth grade students. We did send out a video earlier, you know, orientating them a little bit to Quincy High School. So definitely welcome to them and welcome to any new families to Quincy High. And uh, welcome back uh, to our, our sophomores and juniors and uh, class of 2021, our seniors uh, who are coming back to Quincy High School. Um, I, I guess the, that biggest piece, you know, we're going to be starting off majority remote, um, but the biggest piece is that uh, our staff is still here for you each and every day. Um, our deans and class advisors are there for each of our grades. And um, of course, I told you, Ms. Murray, our assistant principal is always available for you. These are relationships that I always tout as being four-year relationships at the high school for our students and families. Another four-year relationship you'd have is with your guidance counselor. So guidance counselors are eager to work with you um, as you either start at Quincy High School or if you're at the other end of being a senior, you know, um, take a deep breath. They're going to be there to help you for your college planning, whether it's for college or for continuing to, in, into work um, as we go through the school year. I'm heads, uh, I always use as people. Uh, for you, uh, we have students of particular interest in subjects. Uh, they develop tremendous relationships with our department heads, use them as um, someone who can guide them if they have an interest in continuing in these fields uh, after graduation. And for all of us, Anybody in Quincy um, High School, anyone in Quincy Public Schools, our emails are first name, last name at quincypublicschools.com. All right, so uh, remote, right? We're starting off remote. The first day of school is uh, Wednesday, September 16th. We do have some students coming into the building, um, a small number of students. Uh, the majority are remote. Uh, this schedule was sent out when we alerted families that schedules are available on Aspen. So you kind of have to use this as a template. So if you if you do have that schedule that you're looking at on Aspen, look to the far right hand side, it'll say under day zero. That's a straight, the straight number of periods. The top one would obviously be one, two, all the way down um, through period nine. And you notice on our remote schedule, we go two, one. All right, so I'd take this and maybe print it out and you could just write in the class that you have at those times. Please note that on Wednesdays, all of our students, except for some of our EL students, will all be remote. Our teachers will also be teaching remotely. Wednesdays are going to be uh, a day that they are really gonna do a deep cleaning of the building. They'll be cleaning the building every day, certainly, uh, but Wednesdays are going to be reserved for that. Um, another piece, just as uh, thinking about um, the regular schedule, uh, release days, release days traditionally have been on Tuesdays, uh, Quincy Public Schools. This year, they will be on Wednesdays. For high school, we have one a month. Usually, it's the second um, 
It'll be the second week of the month, second Wednesday of the month. Uh, for September, our first one is on September 23rd. Though. Okay, September 23rd. And as we go through, you will see um, the release day schedule right there. So again, I'm gonna put the PowerPoint up uh, as an attachment. You don't have to watch the whole video again um, for all this information to be there for you. Some of the stuff we just said, so bullets, certainly not gonna read all the slides to you. Um, but I think that that third bullet down, let's talk about that. You know, all classes are synchronous. That means they are going to be live. That means when the students log on to these classes during these remote sessions, there's going to be a teacher on the other side. It's very important that students are in class, just like if we had regular class, we're always talking about attendance. Uh, but to log on each and every class. I think we have the rest of those covered. Um, we will be transitioning to hybrid, meaning that we will get some kids back into school part of the time. So uh, that schedule will come out, but I think the big piece that we're gonna need to do the scheduling part is we need families to let us know if they're going to come. So that means um, the survey is going out through uh, email this week. You have to indicate when we do go to hybrid, whether you choose that option or whether you choose to remain in the remote learning model. We absolutely need that information to be able to schedule properly. And we're gonna start that right now, planning for October 13th. Okay, so let's talk about the 16th. Um, you know, we're not just gonna jump right back in and, and, and go. Uh, well, we're going to jump in. We're going to go. And, and the first place to go is um, to get our students back in with our teachers and, and getting those relationships with our teachers going. So um, what we did on these, we did a specialized schedule for the first Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Um, you can see at the end of Wednesday, there's a significant block of time. It's an opportunity for, for us to provide um, probably something similar to this, but maybe a little bit more detailed information for some of the kids of what's going on with them for the year from administration to the classes. So they'll log on to that. There's a similar large amount of time on Thursday as well. This will be an opportunity for guidance. Guidance will put out um, a presentation like this applicable to each grade. So um, students would should log on and watch those at the end of Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, we're going to use that traditional Wednesday schedule uh, that you saw earlier. And then Monday, we're off and rolling Monday the 21st. Uh, some pieces here, breakfast breakfast and lunch. Uh, we're gonna be offered free for all QPS students. Now, I just gotta make sure we understand what we're doing. If students are in person, meaning they're coming to school, some of those um, students that uh, are that have their classes scheduled to come in. Um, it says they can enter the building, building at 7.15 to get breakfast. Now, just the model always here at Quincy High School, we're always open, come early, stay late. Uh, if students get in here to that time a little bit, the last thing I wanna do is leave any student sitting outside. Uh, that's just not what I will do. And if anyone does need to come in and gets here early, they're just merely going to have to sit in that cafeteria and wait to get their lunch. So I, I do have a spot for you if you come in early, but understand that you will not be able to walk through the building. Um, remote students, now this is interesting, when you get your lunch the day before, you should pick up your breakfast for the next day. Okay, so they'll be prepared for you to do that. All right, so about the lunch, as you know, it's free. Um, in person, that's the time. They're gonna eat in the cafeteria. The cafeteria has been kind of remodeled. Uh, we took out the round circular tables we put all student desks in, um, all with social distancing um, in place, six feet apart. And that's where the students will eat who are in person. Remote students can pick up lunches at Quincy High School or the nearest QPS school to you. So, I mean, if, if you lived on um, Center Street, and you were right next to um, down by Lincoln Hancock, you go there, you don't have to come to Quincy High School to get your lunch. Um, so that works at all levels too, if you have any other um, kids in the system. And the time is between 11 and one, and we're gonna use that front spot uh, on Coddington Street at the front entrance of the building. 
uh, to pick those up. Okay. Um, some people have seen some students come in uh, to get bus passes. We do have them. Um, some people say, why are you doing bus passes? Everyone's remote. Well, it's still for the community. A lot of um, kids, that our students use the bus. This ensures them the lower rate. So it's merely for those who don't know, um, this is just a card that we distribute to them that we get from the MBTA. It guarantees a student rate. You have to take that card, go up to the MBTA station and put money on it in order to for it to work for you. But uh, definitely worth a while if you use public transportation. And um, well, what I'd like to do now, I'd like to introduce our assistant principal, Ms. Murray. It's my pleasure to work with her every single day. So she's done a lot of, we, we just went through last week, we had a bunch of students. We say, thank you so much for bringing back your books. Um, she's helped organize with our deans the, the, the um, the book distribution and a lot of the pieces for us as we get ready for the start of school. So I pass to Ms. Murray. Thank you, Mr. Tagliari. What a pleasure. We're so excited guys to get things started. It's different. Sorry, I'll do that. Different this year than any year before, but that just makes it, you know, ever more interesting. So um, here's some information about the contact verification and book pickup. We got 10th grade coming in today. Ninth grade was here yesterday. An email went out and it was posted on social media about the times um, for each grade. So 11th grade is on Monday and 12th grade is on Tuesday. Now let's say you're looking at this and you're like, I can't do that. I can't get in that time. Um, as long as we are here and the book distribution is taking place from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. If you have to come um, on a different day, that is okay, but we do ask that you call the school ahead of time because we're trying to keep the group small, and um, and that's very helpful. I've had quite a people do that, so I appreciate that. Um, also, we have the communication due to difficulties with the city server. I know some people with the emails were like, I didn't get an email. Um, what we've been advised is to ask families to start a Gmail account. And I know it's like another email, but the positive thing is if you do a Gmail account, that can be your QPS account. And you know that Gmail is where you're finding all of your school information. So if you have a Gmail account, you'll be getting emails. It seems to be Yahoo and Comcast that we're having the most difficulty with, but we'll work with you on that. Aspen is the student information system that we use, speaking of communication. So there's a way to set up a family portal. That information is available on the Quincy Public School website. It also was sent via email to you from Mr. Taglary. And it is also available when students come in to pick up their books. We have a flyer that walks families through how to set up a family portal on Aspen. And it's just an awesome thing to do because you'll be able to keep up with, with attendance, with some in some cases with their grades, with earn term reports, and with their schedule, which is really helpful. Uh, if you need a password reset, just pick up the phone, just give us a call. We can help you out with that for Aspen. Or you can fill out, there's a form online as well on the Quincy Public Schools website um, in their technology assistance tab that you can fill out as well, okay? Same with Google Classroom. We're here to help you, all right? It is the universal platform for teachers. We're very excited to use it. Many of our teachers just jumped on it in the spring, so we are we have a lot of professional development going on right now to help build on what they learned in the spring, and so we're excited for the use of that. Students will be getting invited by teachers to join the Google Classroom. If you have not gotten an invite yet, that's okay because there are still schedule changes going on. So some people are waiting till the start of next week to send out those invitations. I know that feels like so close to the start of school, but, uh, but we just wanna make sure the schedules are in place before we start inviting kids and having to uninvite and things like that. So just bear with us, hopefully, um, hopefully it will all go well. If you need help with Google or you lost your password or whatnot, again, just pick up the phone, give us a call. All right, we can point you in the right direction or you can head to the Quincy Public Schools website for in that technology tab again to fill out a form to have your password reset or some if you're having some other trouble with Google, all right? Uh, oh, you know what I almost forgot? I'm actually gonna go back a slide. I almost forgot the classroom codes uh, 
these Google Classroom codes, you'll get an invite from your teacher, but they are also going to be available on Aspen, which is where these two kind of hook up together, and that's exciting. So if a student goes to their academic tabs, and when they click on each class under teacher notes, the Google Classroom code will be there. All right, so that's a pretty useful tool. Parent technology trainings. Let's say you're like, that's great, Aspen, Google, I, I don't know what to do. Um, I don't blame you. I was there in the spring with, you know, I have three young kids at home and it was just like, okay, let's figure this out. So it's really wonderful that Quincy Public Schools is offering some technology trainings for high school parents. That's going to take place on September 15th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. You need to sign up on the website. However, we will also be sending this PowerPoint home and you can use the tab here to sign up as well. Chromebooks, good question. So many of you have filled out the Chromebook request on the website. The district will be contacting each family individually to notify them about when and where to pick up their Chromebooks when they become available. That is not Quincy High School running the Chromebook distribution. Uh, remote learning expectations. So this was put together, you know, last spring, we just kind of were getting our feet wet. So we took our experience from last spring, along with what our students, some students took place in online classes over the summer. So we put all that together. And we came up with the beginnings of our remote learning expectations. Some big, some differences from the spring are attendance, okay. Students are expected to log into every class every day, and teachers will be taking attendance in every class every day. So we need you to show up. Secondly, you will be graded. It's not a matter of credit or no credit, which means you need to complete your assignments. Not that, you know, it's not like a range of assignments. You need to complete everything leading, living up to the teacher's expectations. Now, we're still in a pandemic, and there's still things going on. If something gets in the way, communication is key. We want to hear from you. Reach out to your teacher. Reach out to your counselor or your dean. Let them know if you're having trouble with this remote learning or getting things done, okay? But because you're going to receive a grade, that communication is ever more important. Homework policy. Quincy Public Schools came up with a homework policy that was approved by school committee. So it you will have homework. You know, we're, we're asking teachers to avoid having students meet in groups outside of school. However, uh, other than that, things are going to move forward. And you will not get assignments on Friday that are due on Monday, okay? But you can still get homework assigned on Friday. It'll just be due at a later date during the following week. Our graduation requirements remain the same, all right? You got four years of English, four years of social studies, three years of science, three years of math, recommended four years for those of us going on to um, university or college after, two years of foreign language, same thing, recommended three years, and one year of physical education. Now, the MCAS tests are ever-changing, and DZ sends us updates, and we will share them with you. As of right now, for this year, math and English, there will be an MCAS. Science, there will only be an MCAS test for our freshman class for the class of 2024. Any other classes, 2021 through 2023, are going to earn that CD requirement in science through the courses they take here at Quincy High School. Sounds a little confusing, but don't worry. If you have any questions, give us a call. We'll walk you through it. These are our core values and beliefs, okay? This is the heart of Quincy High School right here. I wish I had more time to talk about it, but I'm not going to. I can get very passionate about this, but if Several years ago, we went through a self-study to receive our accreditation, and the staff, students, families, upper administration, everybody came together to put together these core values and beliefs. And these four words basically sum them all up. It's a combination of our academic requirements as well as our social requirements. So we believe that a graduate of Quincy High will be able to think for themselves, work together, share their information with the world, and be aware of self and others. This last one is ever more important with the things going on in today's world. Speaking of today's world, it's new. It's different. I cannot believe that I'm talking about a mask requirement. But here it is. You saw Mr. Tag start with his mask. I have my mask fully adorned with QHS on it. Thank you very much. Thanks to Fabric Paint. Um, feel free to do the same. And the masks are going to be required every day by every student. Okay, students and staff will be wearing masks. Now, what if I can't breathe? Well, unless you have a note from your doctor, 
you will be asked to wear your mask. Teachers are gonna give you breaks. We recognize, okay, that this is something that takes a little getting used to, but um, you will be given breaks. However, the only way that a student will be excused from wearing a mask is if they have a medical note that's been presented to the nurse, and then the nurse will notify the teachers. You can't come in and be like, my mom wrote me a note saying I can only wear my mask for 20 minutes at a time. You gotta work with us here on this, and we have to respect the rights of everybody in this building. How do we stay connected? Okay, this is these are great platforms for um, for keeping everybody up to speed. There's going to be so much going on in the spring. A group that was so great through all of this was our student council. So if you want to get involved, you want to know what's going on, keep in touch with us. There's a lot of vehicles online. We have Instagram accounts, Facebook, and Twitter accounts, and here they are for you to keep in touch. Speaking of Twitter accounts, someone who shares information regularly is our athletic director, Mr. Mahoney, and I'm gonna invite him over right now. Thank you. And thank you, Mrs. Mari, and uh, welcome to all our QHS families and students out there. Uh, I'm just gonna to touch base on some of the athletics uh, updates um, as it's been a busy summer um, and I'm sure we are excited to absolutely have our student athletes back on the playing surface in a safe manner. So um, the, in accordance with the state and the Department of Education, the MIA put together a modified sports calendar for this school year. So as you can see, uh, we've been approved for some of the following fall sports that we traditionally offer. Um, so boys and girls soccer, boys and girls cross country, girls volleyball and boys golf will be off offered this fall. Uh, the first date will be September 18th, and it's a, it's a little abbreviated schedule than traditionally, but um, teams will have about 11 to 12 games, and we'll keep a normal practice schedule. Um, and then, as you can see, they've, for those that were interested in football and cheer this fall, they've, because of their high-risk um, modifications and things like that, they have now moved that out to a floating season, which will happen in the end of February. Um, with the winter sports and the spring sports, those obviously some of them are still high risk at this time. So the state and MIA will get together before each of those seasons um, to determine, you know, if we if we're going to be able to play under what modifications, under what guidelines. So just keep we'll, we'll keep you guys posted on those ones um, as they come about. So for those that are interested in any of the fall sports that we're offering, uh, we are asking all to get registered online at Family ID. So that's going to be a requirement for any athlete um, in order to try out on September 18th. The other big piece is a physical. So athletes need an up-to-date physical on file with our nurse. It needs to be an in-person exam that happened within the last 13 months. So if you guys do have an up-to-date copy, you need to send that in. Just send an email to myself or our nurses and uh, we'll, you know, we'll update your system. Uh, impact test is also a requirement for our athletes. So this is the baseline uh, concussion test. If an athlete suffers a concussion during the season, our athletic trainer and um, your primary care will work in conjunction with each other and use these results um, to determine the severity of the injury. Um, but we're working right now for next week. We're going to set up some dates for our athletes that do need impact testing. Uh, we'll have you guys come in. We'll socially distance you guys on a computer laptop and uh, we'll get those taken, taken care of. Um, and then user fees. All athletes will be required to pay a user fee in order to participate. And for the fall sports that we are offering, the cost is $100 across the board. So obviously this school year is going to look different and athletics is definitely going to look different. Um, so we are following all guidelines that have been laid out by the state. Um, the EEA has put out guidelines and the MIA has also put out modifications for the way that sports are typically played. Um, so all those EEA guidelines and the modifications have been added to, as links onto our website. Um, our athletics website, there is a tab on the left-hand side that has return to play guidelines. Please review them, go through them. It's pretty uh, in-depth document, um, but it will give you an idea of what we're um, looking at for this fall. One of the big pieces, as Ms. Mari already talked about for our return to school policy, um, masks are going to be a requirement for all our athletes coaches, staff, any referees that come in and any spectators, um, you know, our soccer and volleyball players will be wearing their mask during play and also on the bench. It will be a requirement. 
uh, our golf golf golfers and cross country members will also be wearing a mask, you know, at the start and finish lines, uh, but they will be able to remove them during play um, and while they are running. Uh, there will be some spectator limitations as well. Uh, we're still working through the logistics of that, but uh, the number that the EEA has put out has been, they've capped the limit at 50 spectators. So we're going to need to abide by those as well. Um, some MIA pieces, there won't be a fall season, uh, postseason this year, but our Patriot League ADs are working together to come up with a postseason league-wide tournament uh, to give our athletes something at the end of the season. Schedules will be mainly league-based. As I mentioned, there'll be about 11, 11 to 12 games or so, um, but you're, we're mainly going to be playing the opponents within our league that are geographically uh, close to us. And students can now play up to those four seasons. So if, if you're a football player that traditionally played this fall and wants to give cross-country a shot, stay in shape, things like that, um, students can play all four seasons. So just get involved where you think you can. For updates, um, this is going to be a pretty big, important piece, obviously, as we're leading up to, um, you know, next week. But there is a we do utilize the athletics website on the uh, Quincy Public Schools website. So this is where we all updates, schedules, rosters we will post tryout information on our website as well. Um, as Ms. Murray mentioned, we are on Twitter. So at QHS Athletics, and this will be another um, avenue that I use to send out updates. Um, as well as post, you know, scores and things like that, any postponements that might come up. And there's my contact information, phone number, and email for those that need to get in touch with me. Please reach out with any questions. I'll be happy to help you guys out. And here's our, our fall coaches uh, for this season and their email addresses. So please, if you guys have any sports-specific questions, reach out to them. They'll get back to you right away. I can't thank them enough for the hard work that they've put in this summer to learn all these new guidelines and, and to uh, ensure that our athletes are going to be competing at a safe and healthy, um, you know, and we're trying to, we're, we're looking forward to this season. It's going to look different, but we're asking everybody to be flexible. So, and there's our trainers information as well for anybody that might suffer an injury during the season. Steve will be happy to um, touch base with you guys. And if you guys have any questions, reach out to him. All right. So any questions also just, just email us or give us a call. I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Tagliari. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. Yeah. I mean, athletics, a very big part of Quincy high school. It kind of goes back to that piece of, you know, be here early, stay late. So athletics picks up a pretty big piece of that, but, so do all the uh, extracurricular activities we have, you know, everything from um, robotics to the Park Suit Club, to student council, um, to our Interact Club. So uh, maybe just a little bit of question about what we're going to be offering. Will those things be continuing? Um, we're going to offer as many clubs and groups as we can. So where we can have some kids here after school to do these these programs with the athletics with Mr. Mahoney and his coaches, uh, we're hoping to offer some groups, whether uh, in person or virtual as well. Okay, so we do understand the value uh, to our students and for our families and our teachers and, and staff really enjoy being part of them. It's another way to interact with the kids. So there's nothing better than, um, you know, today's a great day. Ms. Murray said the kids, the 10th grade was here picking up books. There's nothing better. That just reminds you of why we all got into you know, the business of education and being in school. Uh, so we're very excited. I'm, I'm anxious to have the juniors come in on Monday, get their books and spend a little bit of time and certainly the seniors on Tuesday. Um, I, I guess the last piece that I just wanted to make sure we leave, I mean, it's just some phone numbers, but I, I want them on here. I want you to reach out anytime. Um, with, with taking visitors for sure, I mean, it might, you know, behoove you to you know, let us know if you're coming by. Usually it's just totally open door and you can still take a shot if you like, but uh, just know about the safety guidelines and that you'll have to have a mask on. Um, you know, we still have all security pieces in place as well. Um, but come by, don't ever be left out there. Don't feel like you um, can't get assistance. So uh, we will send the remainder of this PowerPoint, like I said, out, we'll post it. And if you need anything, let us know and uh, just, Excited for the best of uh, a tremendous school year 
2020-2021. So let me just wave goodbye to everybody. Here and say again, thank you very much for joining us.